it's time now to take a look at uh, the African market and the consumer market as a whole. Africa's gross domestic product has grown faster than the rest of the world every year since 2001, making Africa a vital market brimming with opportunity for trade. We speak now on the impact of the African consumer and we're joined by Graham Marshall, business lead for strategic development in Africa at Nielsen for this conversation. Thanks so much, Graham, for joining us this afternoon. Well, the African consumer in the spotlight in a very big way and if anything, it's that transition transaction uh, between Walmart and MassMart that's actually uh, done a lot of that uh, focus for us. But uh, overall, I mean, Africa's middle class is growing rapidly. GDP per capita growing at 26% for the past uh, 10 years. Is it? On the one hand, you know, you've got this low base uh, effect to consider. So uh, what do you make of the sustainability of this kind of trend? I think um, most of the consumer packaged goods markets would see Africa is probably a longer term investment, but at the moment relatively unmature in terms of the consumer offering um, and the range of products that, uh, that are available to those African consumers. So I think our view uh, and, and the position that Nielsen has taken is whilst we talk Africa as a continent, it's really about managing the, the diversity in Africa. There are 50 plus different economies, 2,000 different languages, a huge range of consumers available. But th the challenge there is, is how do you make sure that you're talking to the right consumers within that mix and how do you manage that huge range of diversity and that's really what Nielsen's been looking at over the last six months around how do we understand and how how best to market to that uh, that consumer base. Let's start off with what companies are doing right now though I mean are they tackling these markets in the most uh, opportune way at this stage of the game I mean you talk about uh, the various countries but within a country like Nigeria for example it has alone what 250 different ethnic groups and over 500 languages so uh, you know you've got these uh, uh, these companies out there that have to take cognizance of these differentiating factors absolutely and I think the work that uh, that we have done is to really help the industry understand what, what are the common themes in Africa and where you can build a common African strategy and what are the uncommon themes and really our thinking around it is that there is no African consumer there is no one African consumer there is huge amount of diversity around around income around accessibility to products uh, and our, again our positioning on this is that you can have an African strategy but you must make sure you have that local market execution so when you're talking about Nigeria and that diversity of consumer group, how do you make sure that your marketing strategy is targeted towards those consumers who can buy your product and making sure that you have an ability to execute there? Because as you say, a huge amount of diversity and a huge consumer pool. So where does that success rate sit with companies right now in getting that understanding, you know, patted down and knowing that it's not a matter of just plugging in uh, your usual business model in every territory that you're choosing to operate in? And I think that's really the difference that we're seeing in Africa compared to somewhere like an, an India or China or other growing and developing markets and it really is around the consumer packaged good industry at the moment sees a geographical expansion getting into new markets as, as the way in which they capture that growing population and again unless you can you can deliver on that strategy and making sure that your overall African compositioning which we see in the consumers that we've interviewed they really want good value for money products, affordability and availability are absolutely crucial. So unless you can deliver that into those countries, you're always going to be on the back foot and your success plans will be limited unless you can hone in and, and, and manage that local execution. Are companies getting it more right than not? Or vice versa. I think you know we're talking about diversity in Africa, and I think we we very much see a diversity in in strategies. So I think it's very difficult to say people are getting it right or they're not getting it right. I think that Africa, a lot of the the, the, the manufacturers are seeing Africa as being fairly early in that launch cycle. So they're not mature markets. They're not dealing in in mature um, categories like they probably are in some of the developed worlds. Mm -hmm. So for them, it's very much in that early launch stage. So I don't think it's necessary who's got it right or not. I think the key to getting it right is making sure you get the affordability and the availability right as well into your, your segmented target market. Once you've got that right, I mean, you've got a host of other challenges to deal with as well, and chief amongst them is infrastructure uh, challenges. So let's look at that and where that's ranking on the priority list right now in terms of working perhaps with governments to get infrastructure going for the prosperity of the business down the line. We at Nielsen see things slightly differently in terms of that. We see that the lack of infrastructure is an opportunity. 
um, and a competitive advantage rather than necessarily a, a challenge. Uh, and within that, the trade in Africa is very much informal. It's not the formal to modern trade that you see in South Africa. And we see that as a great competitive advantage. So whoever can get their product in that route to market at the most controlled price is a huge competitive advantage. But surely it comes with costs. So how do you leverage off that opportunity as you're seeing it? Well, one of the things that we're looking at in Nielsen, and we're looking at, again this slightly differently, is that the route to market is very crucial in terms of managing that final price to consumers. And we're doing a study in Kenya at the moment where we're seeing that the amount of people that handle that product before it lands in the consumer's hand is very high, and each person taking a margin as well. So how do you efficiently cut through to that so that you get cost control and price control at that final point of consumer consumption. How do you and uh, you know what kind of strategies are being employed so that you can leverage maximum opportunity here? Well again I think this goes back to the diversity that every single player is looking at those challenges slightly differently and again I think the answer to that is going back to understanding your consumer, mm -hmm. understanding where they purchase, understanding the price that they can afford and building into your brand and your marketing strategy the affordability matrix. So landing a, a product that is at the right price but builds value so that your consumer loyalty is, is there and you, you, you switch into that loyalty. Let's take a look at operating environment in the context of a political environment because of course that has been uh, you know a, a feature and a characteristic that investors have looked at for the longest while when approaching a continent like Africa just the kind of political standing within the various territories well I think the one thing from a consumer perspective is that the consumers are very resilient and there is this huge untapped demand in Africa which to a certain extent is about price but the consumer demand is there and it's really around how do the manufacturers satisfy that consumer demand and land their product at, at the right price point because the demand is there regardless of the political situation.